some people chatting away already. I'm just going to do my usual and get my iPad working. Happy Friday, everybody. I'll set, do my hellos in a little second once I've got this up and running. <laughs> so do talk to amongst yourselves. <laughs> Right, I'm going to come right out of this and just try again. So we're going to be working on these galaxy white lines um, pages this evening. Huge apologies that I didn't do this with you uh, last weekend. We had some family things that needed some attention. So obviously that had to take some priority. And I wanted to try and squeeze this in for, um, you know, as soon as I was feeling well enough to really. Let me just make sure that I've moved this along a little bit. So let's do some hellos. Who've we got? Laurie, you were here before it even started. First on the list this evening. There's Christine as well. You're part of the live listeners and the replay crew. Hello. Sylvia as well. Hello, Paula in Canada. We've got Lisa as well. Amy, you managed to stay awake. Well done. We've got Claire here, Heather here. Julie's here. Andrea, I see Julie Perks at the bottom as well. Hi, Liz. Hello, Hannah. Nice to see all of you guys. So yeah, huge apologies for um, the last session that we were meant to do that didn't quite happen. Quite unavoidable, unfortunately. I think um, what's going to be important for me right now is to do a little when I can and when I feel well enough and not really commit myself to sort of a regular session at the moment because it's just not feasible with uh, the return to work and everything. But I really wanted to do this with you guys as soon as we, we were able to. So you can see I've had a couple of stabs in the dark at this um, technique. So this isn't my original idea. This was something that I saw over on Instagram, a profile called Fane and also Vervain O Citroen 2.0. They've kind of pioneered this and then it's just gone in an explosion of loveliness all over Instagram. Loads of different people trying it. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this a go um, on the space page initially in this book, which I will show you. Let me just find it. Oh, there's my mother as well. Hello, hello. <laughs> so this was the page that I tested it out on. Apologies for the glare, you guys know I covered this over. I wanted to um, take Joanna up on a challenge of not doing this space page in black. And none of this is black. So this palette, I actually used a page that Fane did as inspiration and just had a play with my ink tents. And that's then morphed on to me doing these two pages out of Worlds of Wonder, which, if I'm being honest, were both pages that I was kind of putting off. Because this one's too busy and I don't know how to colour cats. <laughs> so these were kind of at the back of the queue. But with a bit of ink tents over them and white pen, suddenly they became achievable. So there are some other pages in my books that I think I'm going to be using this on, purely because I don't want to miss them out, but I don't know what to do with them. So I don't know what you guys think about, you know, palette wise, what kind of um, colours you're wanting to use. If you're wanting me to use these palettes, Sylvia, I know you were wanting to know the colour palette that I did on this page. So I'm happy to do these colours again. Um, as part of the project I can reuse these I don't know what are you thinking are you guys sort of up for these colors something different can you use prismas you probably can um, but for me um, this is a lot less mess in using a water-based media but it's entirely up to you what you use with the prismas one thing that kind of stuck out to me was if I did a galaxy and I did it in pink and then of course put the white pen over the top the pink pigment is going to turn it a violent, violent, almost neon pink colour, you know, which is, is fine if you fancy a page that, you know, looks neon pink, um, doesn't float my boat whatsoever. So, yeah, you could, you could do a galaxy background really with whatever you want. I've gone for ink tents um, purely because with watercolour pencils, I don't know if this white pen is going to reactivate some of the watercolour and again, distort the lines that are white. Watercolour paints, I'm too much of a coward to try it with those. So ink tents was always the way forward for me. So I think really it's a case of see and see. If you've got products that you want to use, you've got things that you don't have and you want to substitute them, 
go for it um 100 for the purposes of this one it's going to be ink tense only and we won't be glazing over the top with prismacolor purely because i don't want to discolor the white over the top so uh, christine says she loves the blue what sylvie's saying lots of different color combination please you're doing a page with six, six circles sylvia goodness me which page are you doing i'm intrigued <laughs> six circles i only have two circles on my page <laughs> so this is the one that we will be using um i know claire's had a lovely time with um, her circles and things this is quite difficult because these images aren't uniform um, my circles are also wonky even though i drew them with a compass this is roughly nine centimeters across so if you're wanting to do that with a compass um nine centimeters roughly and because the images aren't even we're a bit on the wonk but i'm not too worried the background here as ever is some of this stuff which is the flash paint um, in black those of you that were looking on my socials yesterday will have seen that i had a delivery of four more colors of these uh, they're looking great i haven't used them yet though <laughs> Oh, the one opposite the tortoise in this book. I'm going to have to look now. But I can't visualise. Where's the tortoise? He'll be in here somewhere. I'm intrigued. Where is Sylvia's tortoise? Probably going to go straight past it, aren't I? Oh, Lord. Sylvia, where is your tortoise page? Is it towards the back? Oh, this one. Okay, this could work. The only thing with this one, um, I guess, which you could potentially risk, is on some of these ones where you've got little itsy bitsy flowers like this, you're probably not going to see as much of a, a vibrant effect of the white overlay, just purely because the details are very small. So that's something else to mention. When I was having a little look at um, which page I was actually gonna do this on, I was having to be a little bit picky because with some of the details being as fine as this, you're going to lose that galaxy background um, onto the one. But Sylvia, I would say if you're going to have a go on this one, um, perhaps go for the ones that have got the bigger flowers. Um, maybe pick a couple out, whatever, it's your book. But that's just a little bit of advice anyway that occurs to me. So for those of you that haven't already done this page, this is the one we're going to do. Wait, why is everybody laughing? Laurie's laughing. Oh, solo cup. <laughs> Yeah, I used a compass for mine. <laughs> so let's do the palette first that Sylvia was really interested in. And that's the one that we've used on this on this ear cap page. I'm not going to show you um, my journal because I gave this page an on too polite title. Um, <laughs> which um, I will obscure with my thumb. But this is the palette <laughs> for this page. So dark aquamarine, mineral blue, mallard green and jungle green. And this, of course, is in ink tents. Hello, Jeanette. Are you OK? Oh, you used a compass to draw the circles. It was the paint that was the issue. Oh, dear. Did it rampage around your page, Claire? <laughs> Did it go for a little jog as you were doing the circles? Oh, dear. <laughs> So yeah, this is the palette um, with Ink Tense, and I'm no, I'm not telling you the title. <laughs> I'm not. My mum will have an idea of what the title might be, um, but we're not mentioning it. <laughs> so that's the colours. Right, dark aquamarine. Let me just grab the uh, <laughs> grab the colours. Oh dear. Right, dark aquamarine. Um, so that's you, and I want mineral blue. Why can't I see these things very easily when I'm live? This is ridiculous. The mineral blue. It's here somewhere. Oh, God. Mineral blue, mallard green, jungle green. Talk amongst yourselves. We could be here for a while. Right, mallard green. What on earth have I done with the mineral blue? Let's look at it the right way up. Mineral blue. Lagoon. Is that the little short one? No, that's peacock blue. Oh my God, where have you gone? There it is, it's right under my nose. This always happens to me. <laughs> Hello, Alexandra. Yeah, starting as a means, go on, can't find it. <laughs> um, Colours for these, Paula. Um, hmm. I want to say, 
I used my light first. That's what I want to say, but I would have to go back on um, my posts to see because I just can't remember. Guess the title, do we need to keep it clean? It's not a, a terribly rude word, but it, it could be considered rude. So we're just not going to discuss it anymore. Why I get myself into these situations, I've got no idea. <laughs> right, I'm going to give these a sharpen. The reason these look so weird is because I've been picking up colour um, off the edge of these, which is what we'll be doing tonight as well. So mind your ears is while I put this through the 10 win. hiding the title I know it just it had to be done right you're not actually too bad but you definitely need a sharpen last one absolutely adore this sharpener it's so good it does make me clench my butt slightly when I put my prism colors through it but it does work <laughs> hiding the title I know it's bad isn't it I am bad I know this so we are going to lay these colours down kind of from dark to light. So I'm going to grab the dark aquamarine first and use that to get a couple of bits and pieces going and then we'll pick up the other ones so they can all go in my tray. And I'm going to pop a piece of sturdy paper underneath there for when we activate it. The sharpener is brilliant. Did you buy one, Claire? I can't remember if you did. I just need another piece of paper to rest my hand on so my journal's just going to get butchered. There we go. It's only a cheapo anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And let's zoom in. So, dark aquamarine. Oh, thanks, Laurie. You like? I had these done on Saturday. It's a French ombre um, with a small hint of glitter, which I think you can probably just about see under the camera. But yeah, I'm liking them. But yeah, how many of you have succumbed to these 10 win sharpeners? It's all Claire Edie's fault, but I, I love her for it because it's so great. <laughs> right, dark white aquamarine. Let's go. So I can't tell you how seething this is um, to just actually colour over everything. So I'm using a medium to firm pressure on this. I want to get a reasonable coverage of the colour down. But we don't have to go too mad. So remember, with, if you're using ink tents like me, they're very, very pigmented. So a little of these bad boys goes an awfully long way. I keep wondering if uh, Mum's guessed the title of the of the of the cat page. She'll know it, but don't put it in chat. <laughs> it's one that you'll appreciate anyway. <laughs> I don't know how to colour cats. I don't want to stress myself out either with trying to do fur tutorials and, and such like. So I just thought, no, and actually it looks pretty cool with the white line effect. So I'm super pleased with myself. Although I do, will confess, um, I've been trying to work my way through my Worlds of Wonder pages. Had an idea for the flower mandala -y type page, which is opposite the one that's got the little squares of flowers. It's like, like nine squares. Made a right armpit of it. Um, and I'd painted some of the areas out black and I'll have a, a completely black page because I couldn't rip it out of the book because my Chris Chen castle was on the other side. So fuming, I've got a completely black page in my Worlds of Wonder. I had a genius idea that was not very genius. <laughs> Hello, Carol. Yes, she is in chat. That's um, Pam Cameron, Alexandra. Oh, she's just said. <laughs> oh, the other Sue Berry's here. Hello, hello. You bought a backup one. No, I know, same. It's pretty good, isn't it? Pretty good. And Amazon had it on offer as well, which is always winner, winner. Those of you wondering where I got the other colours of the flash paint from, that was from Cass Art. They have like 30% off some of the colours just now. And um, they were about a tenner a jar, considering how many um, pages I seem to have done black grounds on. Um, it's, it's good value for money. Do you think it would work doing it prism castle art without water? Yeah, I think it probably would do. The only thing I would say, Lisa, is be really careful with the pink pigment pencils. That's really hard to say. Um, because when you're using white pen over it, it will go neon pink, like violently neon pink. It looks dreadful. So I would say um, choose different colour palettes that do not have pink in. If you're using ink tents, don't glaze, just use ink tents, which is the way I'm going to teach you how to do it. And then you'll be safe. Because I've tried it and I can confirm I do not have a neon pink spot on my space page. 
Does it feel wrong to colour over the items? Hell no. <laughs> it's quite cathartic, especially on cat pages that you don't want to colour. <laughs> so just easing off a little on the pressure now, which is where I'm going to graduate the next lightest colour in. Ah, oh, cute. Mum's been cute. <laughs> Nothing till payday. La 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 la, says Amy. Amy, they are on offer and you're not feeling well. So I think you owe it to yourself to make yourself feel slightly better by treating yourself to something nice. I'm such an enabler. Hi, Mona. So where are we going to stick a bit more of this? I'm just trying to sort of envisage where this is going to go. Let's put another dark area down here. So I'm just going to press a little lighter on this one because of course I've flattened one of the edges now and when it gets a bit pointy and sharp it gets uh, a little bit darker on the page. So I'll put another little dark area over here as well. And you can just chuck this down. I mean, before you start activating it, it's going to look like a three-year-old has coloured it. Amy's like, I'm not hearing this. Can you show the sharpener? I'm interested in how big is a whopper. Um, you know, and with, with sharpness, size matters. This one is truly enormous. I will show you. Let me show you now quickly. I'll have to unzoom though because it's so large. Wow, for anybody who is only listening to this and not viewing, we are talking about sharpeners. <laughs> there it is, the 10 win. There's quite a big unit, and this is the rechargeable cordless one. There we go. I'm back to colouring. <laughs> Blanket hellos to everybody. It's good to see you guys. Laurie's laughing. I knew you'd appreciate that that um, that gag. And when Heather said "wow," I'm like, "Whoa! What what do we mean wow?" I thought you'd <laughs> be impressed with that sharpener. <laughs> Oh dear, Claire's on the bandwagon. Amy, there is a really nice violet. And I know you do like purple, just saying. <laughs> so um, don't forget that it's the lovely Emily Illustrator's birthday this coming weekend. And I believe she's doing a birthday live stream, I think on Saturday, I think. Check out her socials because she's going to be, um, I think, tackling some of her boxes of pencils, which I can't wait to see. Yeah, she's good, thanks, Alexandra. She is um, not modelling at the moment. She is um, colouring, but tonight she is... What's she doing? What are you doing at the moment? Oh, she's watching telly and messing about on her phone. She's all plugged in, but she's good, thank you. I've had a cheeky day off today to help with my phased return to work. Because I've, I've literally been dead for the last fortnight. It's been horrendous. Um, so I've done a four day week this week with almost full time hours on those days. So I'm pretty tired and pretty sore. But I've had today to just mess about, which has been really good. Oh, you've got the violets you sorted. Do you want me to show you the pink under the camera, Amy? I can, I can show it to you. If any of you want to see them, just let me know because they're directly behind me. In case any of you need more encouragement. So mineral blue, we're going to go in with now. It is huge. It's massive. It takes up a lot of room on my little cabinet next to me, but it fits all of your um, pencils, even these chunky barreled ones like your light fasts, your Derwent ink tenses, your luminance would fit into there as well. It doesn't mangle Prisma colours, gets really nice and pointy with your whole binds, your polychromos. I have been on a bit of a sharpening fest since I got it. I am naughty. Alexandra wants to see. I know some of you will want to see. I'll tell you one thing about these paints, they do smell a bit funky. Not that I've sniffed them or anything. Well, I have. Um, it was just, you know, a thing. They do smell a bit weird. Not in a bad weird way, just weird. <laughs> What's Lisa saying? Oh, you're using the exact same one. Ah, oh, a friend of yours said your colouring was rubbish. Doesn't sound like they're a very good friend, Lisa, if that's what they're saying. Because colouring should be relaxing and enjoyable and people shouldn't be critical. Everyone's at different levels. I'm not an expert at all by any means. <laughs> the page I've painted completely black in my worlds of wonder confirms that. 
honestly I made a right armpit of it, it was dreadful. But it's all about enjoyment, it shouldn't be stressful and people shouldn't be horrible, that's just mean. It's just mean, there's no need for it. Right, I think I'm going to separate, sort of, I think we'll kind of meet in the middle and we'll have the light stripe coming through the middle here. Bless you, Lisa. Don't listen to them. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that think my colour in's pants. No, I don't care. I'm enjoying myself. I can confirm I do do pants colouring. That's why I painted over that blooming cat. No way I can colour a cat. I could probably do the eyes. The fur, not so much. And I haven't got the patience. Um, just now, I don't know if any of you guys feel like that, but... At the minute when I'm colouring, I kind of just want to, I want to get there. I don't want to mess about with it. I just want it to be done. And so I can move on to the next thing. But if you're not already um, in my Facebook group, Lisa28, if you have Facebook, um, there'll be a link in the description below the video. Do pop over and join the group and share your colouring in there because all you will find is encouragement and kindness. I haven't seen a single person comment on anybody else's work and say well that looks shocking and if they did um it would be a case of don't let the door hit you on the way out because we wouldn't tolerate that so do join the facebook group and come and have a lovely time with my people in there it's full of the very best people very encouraging very happy very friendly very cheeky as well at times <laughs> you did your cat black did you hannah yeah I could have done it black in this paint, couldn't I? I'm doing everything with this black paint at the moment. <laughs> Everyone's colouring is gorgeous and Suzanne's his pants. How rude. <laughs> How very dare you. <laughs> oh, funny. But yeah, I've been having a lovely time in this book the last few nights. I'm actually colouring one of the um, little pages in my, back in my Prisma colours again. I started doing it in Holbein's, hated it and erased it all and I've gone over it in Prismacolor. Oh yeah, there's lots of enabling Alexandra in that group, isn't there? But yeah, do come along and um, just make sure, Lisa, when you pop the request through, just um, make sure that you tick on to agree the rules and you answer the membership question because otherwise it automatically declines the membership request. So just a little heads up. But do join. <laughs> Taunt people over metallic paint. Claire, it wasn't taunting, it was therapy. So just to clarify, Lisa, Claire's spent um, a small fortune on these rather beautiful um, metallic watercolours that I use and um, doesn't like to use them because it spoils the ripples. We're trying to um, get her to stop doing that and use them. And Amy very kindly provided a picture of how you can make these watercolour pencils, uh, pencils, paints look like soup. And um, I think we traumatised poor Claire. <laughs> it's a little bit of mallard green now. Exactly, Paula. I a million percent agree with that. So I'm just going to overlay some of that mineral blue with this mallard green because it kind of starts the blending for you then when you wet it. It starts working its magic. So this, as you can see, currently is looking like a toddler coloured it. But that's OK. It will look better once we've activated these colours. Loads of works in progress, Jeanette. Did you finish that page? Weren't you following one of Emily Illustrator's pages, if I'm remembering rightly, from um, the chats? Or was it Colour with Claire? I can't remember. You were, you were doing one, weren't you? Oh, Catherine Chin always here with, with no sound. So she's meant to be out tonight and I think was looking for an excuse to get out of going out. So I'm just wondering if she came up. I think that what she mentioned in the group was she, well, maybe Amy suggested she needed to gouache her hair or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever was going on, it was making me chuckle today a lot. You want a postcard? Good. Oh, the green castlets at the background. That, I think that's what I was thinking of, Jeanette. I'm sure it was. I've been watching so many people's live streams over the last couple of weeks. I'm losing track of what I'm watching. In fact, I've abandoned the page of um, Emily's that I was following. I need to pick it back up and carry on with it. I think because I'd seen this, I abandoned it and went on something else. You shout and I'll be here on Monday. Heather, that's not my fault. <laughs> I take no responsibility. <laughs> I do feel a tiny little bit triumphant, though, I have to say. 
So I'm going to be getting a parcel myself on Monday. Um, my contact over at Castle Arts is sending me a brand new product. And she's hinted that there's going to be something very exciting coming out in the summer. And she won't tell me what it is. But I think I'll be getting whatever it is from them. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm very intrigued. I am getting a parcel from them on Monday with um, three new products. Which I will come on and show you at some point. I hate colouring books, Alexandra. Are we talking about works in progress or are we talking about things you've bought? Goulash. Wow, you're painting your next picture in goulash, are you, Jules? Sounds disgracefully awful. <laughs> um, that, talking of which, Laurie and Julie, um, uh, have you succumbed to the Holbein pencils yet? And if you haven't, I need lots of explanations because I do need to convince you. They've bought out a new colouring book. They certainly have, Sylvia. They certainly have. And I think... That is in my box, winging its way. Oh, yes, you are packing up a whole house. Yes, I remember. I'm so sorry. I've got the memory uh, span of a flea right now. My fibro brain is just, um, it's not good. <laughs> I'm not good at all. So, jungle green. This is our lightest colour. Spent all your pocket money on a wand last week. Oh, um, interesting. Detail. We need to hear details, please, Julie. Oh, you bought six to try, Jeanette. Yes, I think you said that the other night on Claire's stream, didn't you? They are expensive. They are. Like I say, I don't think I would have... Well, I would have paused for longer than I did had I not sold my my luminance. Mum um, got slightly offended that I'd sold the luminance because she actually paid for them for a birthday present for me, I think, like in January 2021. And I've used them about three times since then. But what I pointed out was that when I sold them, I put that money towards the whole binds. That was exactly on my mind, Claire. Can I just say that was exactly on my mind? <laughs> Which is why I was laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, I sold them and then I put some birthday money she gave me this year towards the whole binds. So technically it was a present exchange, I think. That's what I'm saying anyway. I'm much happier with the whole binds, so I can't leave them alone. Oh, which one? Which one did you get, Jules? Whose who's wand was it? Because we looked at them when we went last year, and I was like, do I need one? Decided I didn't, slightly regret it. <laughs> I think Laurie's on the same uh, on the same train that my terrible brain went, and um, Claire's brain also, I think, went as well. <laughs> Honestly, we always get to these points on my live streams. Always. But yeah, tell us, Jules, whose was it? Which character's wand have you got? Amy's also now laughing. Probably Pandora level disturbing laughing, I'm thinking. <laughs> there we go. It kind of looks like a marble. Very strange. Yep, yeah, that's the one. That's what they're sending me, Heather. <laughs> Claire, you're terrible. <laughs> Right, let me brush these bits away. So I think what we will do is I'm going to activate this one and then we will get the colours for the circle at the bottom going as well because this is going to need to dry and I don't have one of those woofer things that um, Emily's got. Ah, he bought Hermione's. Oh, very good. Going to buy Luna's. Ah, oh, very good. Nice. So as per usual, I'm using my Caran d'Ache medium water brush, which is the one that has the blue tip. This is a slightly newer one. Um, it's currently behaving itself. I had actually got the water flowing on this before I came on live and then I was like, well, that was pointless because you're going to be chatting for a period of time and then have to get the thing going again. <laughs> yeah, can you put a picture of it in, in the group, um, please, Jules? We need to see. I know you put it on to Instagram, um, but we, we need to see. <laughs> so we're going to activate now. So I have a nice um, stiff bit of watercolour paper underneath the page. Do expect there to be a little bit of wrinkling, a little bit of bubbling. Um, that will happen. It happens on everything apart from pretty much watercolour paper. You can sort that out um, or the way that I do it is not ironing the book. And that would end in a 
call to the fire brigade i tend to just close it over and put something heavy on it overnight which is usually some pencil cases from the cupboard behind me and it sorts itself out this was wonky donkey when i did the black and as you can see it's absolutely fine now so we're going to start from the lightest colour and work our way out. So I'm going to start from this um, jungle green in the middle. Right, you're a little bit too keen. So I'm just uh, giving my brush a death stare because it's a little bit too keen with the uh, the water droppage. It's not going to be too particular about um, where these colours are landing. And just keep it nice and loose, nice and fluid. Anybody that's frightened of your ink tents, please don't be scared of these pencils. Play around with them, get to know them. Really lovely media to use. And as you can see, they just come alive when you activate them with water. So I'm gonna smush all these colors together, try and get as close to the edge as I can without going too into the black. So when the brush starts to drag a little against the page, you just need to give the water valve a bit of a nudge. This is the way the water brushes should work. I have had a couple of brushes um, out of this range which have either gone a bit hysterical or completely stopped working, but for the most part, they're pretty, pretty decent. Staged photos, Julie. So we expect to see you um, showing, displaying your wand to us. Um, in appropriate attire. So I'm thinking full wizard's costume with cauldron, spell book, the whole shawaddy waddy. I think I speak for everybody on chat right now when we say we are very excited to see this. And the poor replay crew that are going to be watching this that may not be able to get the chat replay are going to be like, what the hell is Suzanne talking about? <laughs> Will the brush pick up the black paint? No. Um, what I have found with this is it dries pretty permanent. I haven't come across any scenarios where it's reactivated again. Um, if it does, it will be the first time it's happened to me. See, it's been a slight dragging a little bit, so I'm just going to give that a little nudge again. And there you can see the water just comes out an awful lot better. These are so, so, so nice. What's mum's an excellent excuse and can be used in any setting? Oh, well, so the ne next time um, you're out with dad goff then, um, mum, and you're like, oh, um, husband, I need to uh, I need to purchase this. And he'll be like, do you really need that? And you'll be like, well, yes, because I need it for my photographic staging. In which case he'll remind you that you are in fact still a phone peasant because there's no iPhone involved. And then you'll be like, you don't need it for photo staging. <laughs> Just something that occurs to me, that's all. <laughs> She's going to kick my ass when she speaks to me next time. I know she is. But I know if um, Dad Goff's listening, he'll be laughing. A lot. <laughs> Which makes me feel quite smug. Spent your pocket money on getting carpets cleaned. Oh, that was because of the move out, I'm imagining. New kitty litter liners for the cat. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. So she's given me like one of those emojis that shows um, she's not very happy, but she's she's going to be laughing. Phone peasant. Amy's laughing. Phone peasant. That is actually a term. <laughs> we keep trying to convince her she should have an iPhone, but she won't have it. <laughs> she won't have it. Ah oh dear. Such fun, as Miranda would say. <laughs> so I'm just switching around now because we're activating from light to dark. So I'm just rotating the page around so that I can go this way. Phone peasant. <laughs> I don't know. So as you can see, I'm not really too worried about where any of this pigment is landing. We're just going with it. <gasps> you have a Zoom meeting. Wow, happy Zoom meetings. So you're going to be officially part of the live listeners and the replay crew, which is very cool. Claire's laughing. <laughs> I 
It's really funny actually, We mobile phone wise, um, we've pretty much always had Apple devices and the device that I have for work, I just like to clarify, not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just I'm not Android, I'm Apple. I understand Apple, I know how to work Apple, I don't have any issues with Apple. Android turns me into like a 115 year old. So the clients that I work with, um, if they, you know, they're sending me stuff, I'm like, well, you know, you can do it on your phone and share it like this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what device have you got? And literally every time they say it's Android, I'm nearly crying. Because <laughs> I can never remember how to do it. So I have to keep a list of documents on my phone available at any one time so that I can physically send it to myself at work so that I can then talk them through it. Honestly, you're either one or the other, aren't you? We've just always had Apple phones. There's lots about Android that I like. I just don't understand how to work it. <laughs> Apple does that to you, Andrea. I know you're either one or the other, aren't you? I have people that are like, oh no, I don't, I don't do Apple. So like, yeah, I don't do Android. I don't understand it. <laughs> but hey, hi. Oh, these are so pretty. It amazes me with these pencils. It never gets old when you activate them. They go from looking really, really dull to just absolutely popping off the page. So this is the same palette as that cat page. Obviously, it took me an awful lot longer to um, lay the ink tents and everything down on that page than it's done for this one, you know, purely because... It was a full size colouring book page. Oh, really, Jeanette? It's so funny, isn't it? Because you literally, people are at one or the other. And um, somebody did show me a, um, what do you call it, a Google Pixel. I didn't have a clue with that either. End up with hard edges. That can happen, Paula. Um, I mean, there are some sort of reasonably hard edges on this one as well, but. Don't forget, you always have another bite at the cherry with putting an extra layer of ink tents over the top, which we'll be doing um, with these ones, or using the, the glazing method that I've covered in some of my other videos, where you just use ordinary pencils to just retouch things. So they're really easy to actually, you know, tart up any areas that are not looking quite as you would want them to look, um, you know, and correct them. Normally I would glaze over with ordinary pencils, but because we're doing the, the white line thing, I'm actually going to use more ink tents over the top. So I'll show you how to just pick up little bits of colour from the tip of the ink tents pencils and layer that over the top of what we've already put down. And I think for this sort of galaxy background as well, it's nice to keep it quite loose. You're a Samsung girly, are you, Hannah? <laughs> Right, let's let that dry up a little bit and we'll get the other palette going a bit further down the page. So I think we will go for, in fact, I'm definitely going to touch in these edges because I've got some quite light edges there, but I'm just not wanting to take it right, right up to the edge of the black. So I will have to fiddle about with that. So let's do um, the other blues. So I have a different journal for these colours um, so I like to sort of put swatch them out into this and actually keep them so let me just see which ones we've used so here we go again now I know you're one of them because you're a little shorty some bright blue you're also a little shorty dark cerulean and we want Malibu Where's Malibu gone? Which is also getting a bit short. Cookie. Can you do the cones? Yeah. We're just turning into a goldfish bowl. <laughs> so, new colours for the other circle. So, some dark cerulean. Samsung watch. Oh, wow. I have a colleague at work who's got a Samsung watch and it looks beautiful. Malibu. So a couple of these are out of the newer colours that came out last year. Uh, bright blue and peacock blue. 
which is getting very, very short. So mind your ears as again while I pop these into the 10 win. Hello, Marcy. We are just talking Android phones versus iPhones at the moment. The only thing with this is it's very loud when you're live. Two more to do, bear with. Is there coffee tonight? There was, um, but much, much earlier. I never have coffee late in the evening. There we go. Beautiful. Hi, Celeste. Right, so darkest colour for this one is going to be the peacock blue. I've got little bits and pieces all over the place on this. Glittery bits and all sorts. It's keeping it looking interesting. So peacock blue going to be going on first. I'm just going to have a little little sip of my, uh, my juice because I'm starting to feel a little bit dry. What's the second colour? I heard banana blue. <laughs> it's not banana blue. One sec. Oh, that's better. Mm. So let me run them through again. So Malibu, I don't know if that's what you heard as banana blue. Malibu. Bright blue. Dark cerulean. And Peacock blue, and the peacock blue is the one we're going to go with first. So let's get this um, popped down. So I think we'll go the same way as we did with the one up top there. We'll have it a similar similar shape. So peacock blue coming on first. This one's getting just too short to be comfortable to hold now. I seem to favour this shade when I'm using ink tents and blues. But it has lasted really, really well. Banana blue. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen a blue banana? The only blue banana I know of is the um, club in Pretty Women. That's called the blue banana. Banana blue, mal blue, same thing. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, have you had like an Irish coffee or something? <laughs> banana blue. That's funny. Malibu, banana blue. Every time I use it now, I'm going to think it's called banana blue. Every time. <laughs> so I'm just easing off uh, again the pressure on the pencil because we're going to introduce one of the lighter ones. So again, it's going to look like something that a toddler has coloured until we start, whoa, blending everything together. So this one as well um, can be quite dark when you activate it. So on the um, underwater page that I showed you at the start of the live, I did have a lot of fun in the bottom left corner because I'd really layered this up massively. And I was like, oh no, because I can actually see all of the little details to outline them with the white. And I was like, oopsie, we went a little bit OTT on that one. Have a tattoo shop in Exeter called the Blue Banana. Crikey. Oh, wow, we've just dressed inks. Really, Marilyn, that's interesting. It's one of those things. I think those two girls over on Instagram sort of had come up with this idea and, and everybody that saw it just got so inspired. And I think it's just one of those things that's gone absolutely viral. Everybody's trying it. And it was just a case of what have I got that I can actually do this with? And instantly I thought, I'm going to give it a go with the ink tents. Ah! Weasel. I like that, Amy. <laughs> Weasel. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, graduate those edges slightly. And then we're going to grab the next colour to go in with. And the top bit's coming on nice. So by the time we've, uh, we've got there with that, we should be okay. Right, what's the next one? Bright blue. So bright blue next. There we go, bright blue. Weasel. <laughs> See the thing with um, distressed inks? So, yeah. 
had some of them, quite a good selection of them, tried them. The outcome was the distressed inks stayed distressed and I became distressed. I was terrible with them. There's obviously some sort of knack to them that I either don't or, or can't have because I was just dreadful. It looks shocking. Same with those um, Faber-Castell gelatos. Can't use them. Hopeless with them. I think, you know, you either you either get these things or you don't. And I just really could not do it. But I bet it would look great in distressed inks because there are some cracking colours across the different sets of the Tim Holtz ones. Really beautiful. But all that happens when I use them is I become distressed. And then end up thinking that's got to come out of the book because that looks pants big brushes ah ah lisa wonderful she's in the group thanks mum fabulous big brushes amy's got some really good brushes for her gelatos haven't you amy which you gave me some of when i saw you but i've been using them for chalk pastels pretty good for chalk pastels you know but you're scared of them. Well, they made me distressed, but you're, like, you're good with the gelato, so you'd probably be fine with them, Amy. They just, they, yeah, they left me distressed. <laughs> what do you think of distressed inks, Suzanne? They distress me a lot. Oh, dear. But yeah, thank, like I was saying at the start of the live as well, thanks for your patience and everything with, um, you know, last weekend and the fact that I haven't actually got a regular live schedule planned at the moment I've just I think I'd actually vastly underestimated just how unwell I'd been um with the surgery and how it was going to actually make my body feel in terms of my fibromyalgia when I went back to work because it's quite a demanding stressful job um that I work in and it's just floored me I felt really rotten for the last two or three weeks and I was just like, oh my God, this is, I can't do this regularly at the moment. So I think giving myself a bit of flexibility to sort of stream when I feel okay and not stream when I don't is going to be the way forward for the next little while. I do feel much better this week than I did last week, but I still feel quite tired. You know, I've got to remember as well, like my body was, was completely septic. I think I'd said to you guys on one of the first lives um, since I came back, the, the treatment that I had and everything, it, the operation should have been done as an emergency when I presented into A&E and it wasn't. I was just sent home. So by the time the um, surgeons actually opened me up, I was septic um, and could have died, which is what they told me when I went to see them at the end of last month. So processing that's been a bit weird as well. Like you don't expect that. <laughs> you don't expect to be told that um, when you've got big, you know, gone into hospital. So, yeah, it's it's just been I think I've got to kind of appreciate that my body's going to take a bit of time to just get back into its groove again so dark cerulean is the next one but yeah I can't do too much too soon and then I hate putting stuff out and then cancelling things at the last minute it just makes me feel so guilty so um I think for the moment we're going to keep it loose we've got a week off coming up soon anyway which I'm really looking forward to that'll be some nice R&R &R time so yeah, I'm hoping to finish this off with you guys on Sunday. But again, watch this space and I'll put it up on Saturday if I can. It is frightening. Yeah, it is frightening, really frightening. But yeah, it's just you. sometimes, I think in my keenness to come back because I'd really missed you guys and doing these lives really you know, helps my mental health and my enjoyment and stuff. And I hadn't been able to do it for like three months. I think in my rush to come back, I was just like, yeah, you're fine. You can fly to the moon and back. And um, actually, I couldn't. Not remote, Not even with Julie's wand. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've got to be realistic. Because we've kind of got to turn up for the paid job or they get a bit miffed. So, but yeah, I have had a lovely, lovely cheeky day off today. It's been really, really nice. Right, are you still damp? Nope, you're getting there. Let's just pop this over. Ah, oh, thanks you guys, you're so sweet. But yeah, I've done, I've done absolutely nothing today. Oh really, Paula? See, I had no idea. I just knew that when I'd come round, I wasn't meant to be kept and I had to be kept. 
and they were pumping stuff into me like every couple of hours, like loads of stuff, but nobody told me. And I didn't actually see the surgeon before I went home. Um, so I didn't know any of this until I had my post-op appointment at the end of March. And I was like, what? So yeah, it was quite a shock. You don't expect to um, to find out that that's what very nearly could have happened to you. I was like, oh my God. So it's really scary. Oh, crikey, Jeanette. Right, let me just graduate these lines a little bit because the banana blue, as, um, as our Claire calls it, is quite a light colour and I just want it to be a smooth transition rather than too scary and stripey. So let me just soften all of this up a little and especially down this bottom bit here as well. Yeah, massively, Amy. There we go. So, banana blue coming up. We, we, the rest of us call it Malibu, but Claire calls it banana blue. <laughs> I'm going to think that every time we use this colour now, it's going to stick. <laughs> so this is one of the newer um, shades out of those 28 new colours that they brought out. I'm sure it was last year that they brought these out, wasn't it, guys? Was it about September, October time that these colours came out? And I have to say, they have slotted in really beautifully with the colours that they already did. They filled in quite a few gaps and made the range of pencils a bit more versatile. Right, let me just uh, pin this down. If I can nudge this into the edge of the image. But yeah, it certainly hasn't been the start of the year that um, I was expecting. That's for blooming sure. Keeps life interesting, doesn't it? It is good to be back to the day job though. Really nice to be back. I'm just gonna swizzle this round a little so I can do this bit this way. How are you doing? Oh, you're dry, lovely. I don't have one of those hot air whiffer things that um, Emily uses. And I think if I did have, and I used live on air, I would probably be showing you guys how to set fire to your coloring books live. Um, I don't really trust myself with one of those. Malibu. <laughs> Claire, you've got us all thinking that now. It's official. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to get all the loose bits and bobbies off. Nice. So what we'll do is we'll activate this and then it can be drying while we faff about with the other one. Let's just reawaken uh, the old water brush. How are we doing, my love? Are you still with us? Are you hysterical? I'm hoping not. Come on, you thing. Yeah, you'll do. There we go. Right. So again, we're going to work from middle to side, middle to side, because we're going from light to dark on this one. In fact, let me just... I hate resting my hand on this um, black paint because it feels weird. It's um, probably more about me than it is the paint. <laughs> so again, look at these colours. Right. Come on. Sort yourself out, brush. So you do have a little bit of time to sort of manoeuvre these about. If you are getting harsh lines, um, which is what one of you guys were mentioning a little bit earlier on. I want to say it was Paula. If it wasn't Paula, I'm really sorry. I do have the uh, memory span of a, of a flea just now. Um, then don't panic because we're going to be retouching this. So I'm going to show you how to retouch directly from the ink tense pencil rather than um, colouring over the top of it again. Because you don't have to just use ink tense um, pencil to paper. You can actually pick up the colour from the tip of the pencil as well. Just wiping the, the brush off in between because I don't want a really harsh line sitting down on that bit. Oh, it's no wonder this colour is the shortest one. I absolutely adore this uh, peacock blue it's so pretty I was looking on my Instagram um, grid earlier on today and noticing how when you scroll through it a lot of it is, has got it's always got blue in always I think we had a, um, a question a few weeks ago about is is there any colors in your pencil sets that you're always using it's always the blues and the same greens that I pick up always and it's been really nice this week to be back to the Prismacolors again. 
like I say, I got the whole binds out. It wasn't the fault of the, the pencils. I just, I just wasn't, I wasn't getting the combinations how I wanted them to look. I was getting really annoyed with myself. So I kept erasing it. And I thought, you know what? I just want to pick up my Prisma colours and go back to using um, colour combinations that I use all the time. And then it's just started flowing again. So I'm actually doing the toy shelves page in this book at the moment with the Prismas. And then I'm going to use one of the new paints, which I will um, whip out and show you, because particularly I know that Amy desperately wants to see them, because she's definitely wanting to uh, buy something to cheer herself up. <laughs> Was the tip of the water brush already blue? No, it wasn't. This comes um, completely white, shiny white and shiny new. But then as you use it, it stains. And the weird thing is, um, you can clean the tip, and although it stays blue or green, um, it's still clean when you go to use it. So whatever the, the first few colours are that you use are what the tip of your bristles are going to go. Mine are always blue. Always blue. Right, don't get hysterical please because we're right near the edge. Just glaring at it because it's getting a bit keen with the, uh, the water flow. Not the brush's fault, it's me, I pushed the valve too hard. But yeah, they always stain, but you can wipe them clean on paper towels, kitchen towels, whatever it is that you call it in your neck of the woods. There's Catherine. Have you got sound now, Catherine? Hopefully you have. But yeah, they always, they always stain. But yeah, it would be cool, wouldn't it, Claire, if they did it to match the barrel? I might like have just said that would be really cool. Right, let's swizzle you round because we're, of course, going to be doing the other side now. So we'll pick up and work from the, the top down, I think, on this one. So where it starts to drag on the page like that, you just need to give the barrel a nudge and get the water flow going again. You're still at the pub. Oh, God, please tell me I'm not live at the pub. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that somebody had been watching me in a pub and I was like, oh, no. Please don't say I'm live in a pub. Oh dear. But yeah, let's see where we get tonight. What time are we on? We've only been going an hour, so that's not too bad. I've got another hour in me, definitely. Especially with it being Friday night. Plus my Catherine's dead, dead chuffed because she's watching one of her programmes that she loves and I've branded awful. Speaking of programmes, um, any of you guys in the UK watching the new series of Race Around the World? Because that started, um, I want to say it was last night, might have been the night before, and they're in the um, Far East and it's fascinating, absolutely loving it. Right, you've gone hysterical, stop it. So we've had that on, um, that's been a really good watch so far. It's only been one episode, and any of you that are watching The um, Apprentice, it was the interviews last night, so I couldn't watch it last night because we were um, on FaceTime with my auntie and my uncle, and it, it was going to be, um, well, I thought it, would, it was like half seven, so I thought I would definitely be finished by nine and we'll be watching The Apprentice, but we all just gabbed each other's ears off, and um, we didn't stop until about... 20 past nine something like that so we were having a lovely time so I'd got like I said the day off so I sat and watched it this morning after breakfast I love the interview one I just adore Claude so good I know you were watching it Sylvia I got your message it's like have you seen it it's like of course I've seen it I can't wait and something else that um a friend at work has got me into I don't know if any of you guys have ever watched it I branded it completely pointless without ever having watched an episode but married at first sight have any of you seen that program so we watched the latest series of the uk one which we then were literally counting down to we'd finished work so we could put it on again because it was that good and we're now in the middle of watching um the most recent australian one which we're gripped on. In fact, once I've finished the live, <laughs> we'll be putting that straight on because we were in the middle of the second commitment ceremony with them. And uh, yeah, it was getting good. <laughs> it was getting really, really good. You haven't watched it yet, Paula. 
Oh, get it on the telly. It was so good. And Japan looks incredible. Absolutely incredible. Really does. Oh, really, Amy? I didn't know you guys watched that. Or was that one of the things you'd suggested to me? And I was like, no, that's just ridiculous. I'm not sure. It was my mate at work that got me into it. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. Right, I'm just going to turn over this. I've uh, got a very interesting paper towel here now. Let's um, just double it over. And then as you can see, that's me just making sure it's nice and clean. And all the, even though it's all stained and all blue and green, it's still completely clean. It amazes me how it does that. <laughs> oh dear, Gary doesn't, doesn't like it, does he not? Oh dear. Right, you guys, let's do the retouching. So I just need to make sure that I pick up the right colours here. <clears throat> so I've put them all in my little tray. So I know I want uh, jungle green. Uh, where's my list? So peacock blue needs to go in there. Mineral blue. Uh, dark aquamarine. Malibu banana blue needs to go in there. Ah, Malibu green. Dark cerulea. Yeah. Okay, nice new piece of uh, paper towel. So. I'm going to do the retouching work now and we are going to start with the darkest colour. So that is going to be the dark aquamarine for this one. Now for the retouch, so normally at this stage when I'm using ink tents, you would see me get um, as close a match as I can out of any set of pencils that I've got to then colour over the top of what I've put down. I'm not going to do that, we're going to retouch directly from the tip of the pencil. Now, don't panic about doing this. You're not going to dissolve your pencil because we're not completely, um, you know, dipping it into a glass of water or something. We're literally just picking up bits of colour with the brush. So I have the uh, kitchen paper ready. Just make sure that this has still got some water flow coming through. Don't want it to be wet, wet, just enough to uh, pick up some of this colour. And we're just going to tickle the tip and then just start retouching. So what I am gonna carefully do is just nudge some of this in against the edge here. Not gonna get it to a point where we're right towards the edge, I don't think, but just so that that white's not as glaringly obvious as it is. And I'm just gonna tickle the tip and grab some more color. And then I am literally just dotting it on with the brush and moving that colour around until I'm happy with it. So if you guys have got questions at this point, go for it, because I'm going to try and keep an eye um, a weather eye on the chat as I'm doing this as well. So again, tickle the tip. Always wanted to go in the cherry blossoms out. Do you know, do you know, we saw a programme last year, I'm sure. I can't think what it was, but the cherry blossoms were out and it looked incredible. No, like having to tie the trees up and stuff. Was that another race around the world? can't even think what it was. Catherine will probably remember what it was. I have to ask her. This is going to be as bad as ridges in the paint. No, it, Claire, it isn't. It absolutely isn't. <laughs> You're literally just tickling the tip of your pencil. And look, it's not dissolving into, into a heap. It does make the tip of the pencil look a bit weird, as you saw at the start of the live before I sharpen them. But it's nothing that a little sharpen doesn't cure. So there's nothing to be worried about here. <laughs> You're so funny. We've got to get you into using these paints of yours. I'm going to start like a hashtag. Something like, I don't know, come up with a hashtag for me, guys. Claire needs, Claire, Claire, Claire must use sparkly paints or something. Or no sparkly um, paint fear. We'll get it trending. <laughs> Take care, Andrea. Thanks for stopping by. And then we're going to just whip over to the other side of the page here where we've got more of this green aquamarine. And again, just dot this in where needed. So we won't have to put this in absolutely everywhere, just any areas that we feel need a bit of a touch up. 
I think with the galaxy backgrounds it looks nice for it to be a little bit rugged looking rather than too placed. We're not going for perfection here, we're just going for something that looks cute. But yeah, those of you that worry about ink tents or if you've got questions about ink tents or things that are worrying you, um, you know, now's the time to sort of ask me while I'm using them. I don't profess to be an expert, all I can do is show you how I use them. Uh, which works for me but it has come with you know trial and error but water-based media um you'll struggle to find something as pigmented as this maybe proper watercolors you would um i do have a set i'm just too much of a coward to use them <laughs> i've got those um harry potter books i did the um sorting hat in them last year and had a really nice afternoon using them and then I've just not tried again and I didn't do too badly. I was quite pleased with what I'd done. You're liking the dappled effect. It looks good, doesn't it? So we don't want it to be too placed. I think it gives it a bit of texture looking like this to hashtag tickle the tip. <laughs> we could add a hashtag about Julie's wand onto the end of that, but maybe we'd better not. <laughs> They scare you, Jules. Why? You're an absolute watercolour whiz. If you can work watercolour paint magic the way that you do, you can absolutely paint successfully with ink tents. Definitely. Or maybe if you prefer paint pans, is getting um, the ink tents paint pans. <laughs> I fear with my mother's just plunged us off the edge of a long roller coaster drop here. It's like tumbleweed as I try and think of something else to say that's not about hashtag tickle the tip. <laughs> you think you could do them like that, do you think? Because have you got the full set of um, ink tents, Jeanette? I can't remember. Right, we're going to grab the other colour now. So just make sure that's clean and then we want the mineral blue. So this is just the next one of the four that we used. You really struggle with them. You just need to have a play with them, Paula. Literally, that it's just been trial and error and having a play around with them that's got me using them like this. Um, a couple of uh, tutorials that I found quite handy um, sort of back in the early days of me using these were by um, Sani, Sani Hart, I think she calls herself. I don't know if that's what her YouTube channel is called, but she does a really good um, few beginners videos on ink tents as well. And I've got a beginners um, video on ink tents, which was quite a while ago. So you'd have to scroll right back to find it. But that could be somewhere to start and just have a play with them. But they are, they're just lush, absolutely lush. Gonna use a book. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jeanette. I play around with them in a sketchbook. So um, I have like a wet sketchbook and a dry sketchbook that I sort of journal things in. So the the one that I do my colour combos for the ink tents, I obviously like to keep a swatch in there of what they've looked like. And I just play around in there. Um, one of the pages that I've just done, I've come up with loads of different palettes and some of them I've put like a line through because they, they weren't looking quite how I would have wanted them to look. And so I've just put a scrub through them, but you know, they, they might have worked for other projects. And the the sort of wet journal that I use for, my, for, for this stuff and watercolours um, was just a sketchbook that I bought in the works and it was a quid. Just a quid. Need a t-shirt with that. God. Jules. <laughs> oh, yoy, yoy. That's so bad. I might actually, when I post this up on Instagram, <laughs> I might put that hashtag on. <laughs> See if we can get it trending. Although it might actually attract to the sorts of viewers that we're not really wanting. <laughs> They'll be like, wow, it's pencils. I thought this was a whole other game. <laughs> See, I know if I say this to Catherine, she's going to do the biggest eye roll ever. And I'll know from that eye roll that what she's actually saying to me is, for God's sake, will you moderate what comes out of your mouth, woman? <laughs> 
do it, says Julie. I'm totally going to. It's going to happen. <laughs> and then if any of you guys follow along and do this page as well, you'll have to put the same hashtag on your... Uh, we don't want to repeat of that scenario. Are you going um, on the duck trail, Amy? Is that what you're thinking? Because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm totally going to do it. So I'm just still picking up off the end of the pencil. I'll keep this in view actually so that you can see what I'm doing. Tickle the tip. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to put like hashtag tickle the tip, hashtag mum started it. So it can be two hashtags that we'll try and get trending. <laughs> oh dear. Honestly. It's all gone a bit, it's all gone a bit bonkers. Mum's sorting the t-shirts. Yeah, I want a pencil case with it on. <laughs> and a ruler. The existing ruler that I've got in this cupboard always makes everybody laugh when um, I use it anyway. <laughs> and I have to add the cat's name as well. I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Just not sure I can. It's not desperately rude. Um, slightly rude. Be trending by this time tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> you lot are terrible. My mother's terrible. She started this. Put it down to her gingerness. And I can say that because I'm a demi ginger. So I'm allowed to. <laughs> right, we're nearly there with the retouching. Be trending by this time tomorrow. Oh God! Can you imagine? It's, it's slightly cringe, isn't it? I mean, let's face it; it's slightly cringe. <laughs> right, Mallard Green, and you can see. Look, the the pencils are not actually dissolving. I wondered when the oi was coming. That was quite a delayed oi. <laughs> oh God. That's it, it's descending into chaos now. And we really do want a photograph of your wand in the group, Jules. If you can get on that, please, later on. Need to see it. I don't know if I saw it on Instagram, actually, and I've just forgotten. I'm sure you put it on Instagram. Yeah, you did. You put a post up. I saw it. This mallard green is a really, really beautiful colour quite a vibrant one so a little bit does go quite a long way here you get a nice transition between the jungle green which is the final colour and this one Jeanette's smiling <laughs> just got visions of uh, a few lot cracking up and, and my dear wife wondering what the hell we're all talking about that's making me hoot Although she's pretty engrossed, to be fair. <sighs> so I'm going to retouch um, the circle as well at the bottom of the page like this. So it will take a little while for this to dry, which is why we're doing the two circles tonight. Otherwise, there would have been a lot of tumbleweeds going across the screen while we were waiting for this to sort itself out. So this will be quite um, sort of puckered and things. So once we've finished this tonight, literally, like I said, I'll be closing it over and just putting something heavy on it to uh, get it to just go flat again. It will do that in most colouring books. It isn't anything to worry about. If you don't mind a bit of wonky, it's cheered you up. Good. <laughs> if any of my work colleagues are listening to this, I'm going to absolutely die on Monday. It always happens when we have one of these interesting conversations, somebody from work sees it and they're like, you've lost your mind. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> this is no different to how I am normally in the week. You know this. <laughs> oh dear. I can't wait for um, Emily's stream this weekend. I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if she's here tonight. Normally she says hello if she's lurking. She may be busy. 
Although, does she stream on a Friday as well? I think she does, but I don't know what time it is normally. Any of you guys know what time Emily streams? Uh, they will, Paula. That'll be a thing. I'll be getting some serious side eye from my uh, from my colleagues. I was getting plenty of side, side eye yesterday because a couple of things that I'd got sent really made me crack up and the office was completely silent. And then there's this idiot at the in my corner of the office that's snort laughing at when there's nobody near me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, Julie, the skeleton thing. Oh. See, you can't rehash that because everybody's going to want the story and that's definitely not one I can repeat. <laughs> not live, anyway. <laughs> I see you, Claire. <laughs> it's just one of those I can't believe that this has happened to me types of situations. I'd rather tell you the title of the cat page in the book than go into that. <laughs> so a little bit of jungle green now. So we're just going to um, finish off the middle bit here. Yes, we do have exactly the same sense of humour. <laughs> it's always questionable. Always. Oh dear. Right, I'm just going to wipe that off slightly because I don't want to create more lines just want enough just to jazz this up a little bit more so just keep your paper towels handy if you do find that you get a bit too much um, pigment to move around you can just clean the tip of the brush like you normally would when you're activating these and then it just stops everything going a bit hysterical Oh dear. So beware any newbies that haven't been on one of my lives before and um, decides that it's all a bit too weird and disappears. It's a good job we all know what we're all talking about though. <laughs> That's the main thing. Right, let's see if I can just nudge a bit of this jungle green into the edge here. So this is definitely touching the black and nothing is reactivating, which is a good thing because it would be a, a bit of a look um dotting bits of black around on this page but that is not what what we're wanting to go for oh is it um Jeanette uh, I've never caught her Friday streams um I usually try and catch the Wednesday ones even if I'm just lurking and listening and I've been really enjoying um catching Claire's stream on a Tuesday evening so I'm usually um sort of plugged into that with one ear and, and listening to the telly with the other and sort of chatting with you guys but it's been really good um seeing her come on on live that's been really interesting hi Angela Angela you've, you've missed a belter would anybody care to fill Angela in on what she's missed because I just feel like I can't go into it <laughs> oh dear <laughs> Right, let me just have a little critical look at this and make sure we're happy. I think that will do for that one. So we will do the same now with the bottom one while this one's drying itself. And then hopefully um, by the time this is dried, we can actually finish this one off tonight and do the other one on Sunday. So let me just switch out these pencils. Yes, yeah, see, look, mum's lost her nerve now. She's like, I'm not going into it. All I will say, Angela, is we're about to start a new hashtag and it's called Tickle the Tip and I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Which is what we're doing at the moment. So, Peacock Blue. And we're tickling the tip of the pencil. Where's my bit of, where's my bit of thingy gone? That's better. So this is where it can end up um, almost being too dark to see through. So just be a little bit careful with this one. Take care, Paula. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> you can just see Angela thinking, what the hell have I just walked into? <laughs> Absolute chaos that my mother started. 
Well, I suppose I started it really because I served, didn't I? <laughs> oh God, Angela, oh no. <laughs> uh. Oh, I must not snort laugh live on air. That would be a low point. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to explain all this to uh, my lady wife when I come off here. She's gonna be like, "What the hell are you laughing at?" <laughs> yeah, exactly, Catherine. <laughs> In fact, I'm surprised she's not gone to make a cup of tea yet. Are you making a cup of tea, Mrs. Berry? Are you having a cup of tea? Yeah, you know it's getting late. If I was to say to you, hashtag tickle the tip, what comes to mind? Nothing. She's gone very blank, so that's okay. We've, we've got away with it. Mum's mum's just, yeah, started a thing. We're going to have a new trend in hashtag, apparently. Is it something to do with the tip of the bush? Tip of the pencil. Oh, right. I won't fall off. No. I won't tell you the direction that some of my um, lovely followers have gone in with the live chat, which is why you've heard me cackling. <laughs> Am I wanting tea? What do you think, Claire? <laughs> That's an end. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. Go and make a cup of tea. <laughs> do I want a cup of tea? Hell no. I hate the stuff. I hate the stuff. I'm trying to think what's been the most random live that we've ever had. And I think uh, the one that's where I was like gagging on a cup of tea pretty much live. That was, that was, yeah, a whole new low, wasn't it, everybody? <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, this is a slightly different way of using the ink tents that we've not really done before normally you would see me correcting any areas that I wasn't happy with um, with ordinary pencil on the top but I just think for the purposes of there being white pen that's going on here and I don't want to get pigment pick up and stuff now dying this end says Amy <laughs> is it Pandora disturbing level dying tea tasting was hilarious somebody mentioned that um i think this it was either this week or last week on emily illustrators live because i was chatting to a bunch of you and somebody was like suzanne and tea and i was like i'm, I'm actually never going to get past this am i ever <laughs> god if that company that actually made that tea had heard that i would, I would think i would die <laughs> it was just really bad oh And I really struggled to say, not well, not say what I was actually really thinking at that point. Oh God, Claire, that's just a, a whole, a whole other tumultuous drop down a hill um, there. <laughs> Catherine's response and confusion. Yes, I know. She um, said something else mouthed something else to me before she went out to make a cup of tea which I was laughing at um she was on the same page that we all were <laughs> but the look I got was do not repeat what I've just mouthed at you while you're alive and I was like yeah don't worry I won't <laughs> oh dear so I'll retouch as much of this as I can until the other bit is um, dried up because I'm very aware that I actually want to finish one of these or, or at least do part of one of these circles with you guys tonight because um, I'm very aware that we're approaching half eight now. And uh, the long, longer we get towards nine, I'm going to start to wilt. I think you did, Claire. I think you did. It was either Claire's live or Emily's live. And I think it's been mentioned a couple of times over the last couple of weeks as well. <laughs> so it's obviously going to be one of those things that's going to go down in history. Suzanne's tea tasting live on air. <laughs> um, tell him you are, Julie, and it all started with your Harry Potter visit. And a certain purchase. <laughs> it's all descended from that. <laughs> oh, dear. 
You'll have to let me know if you get serious side eye from him, Amy. <laughs> Anybody else in the UK um, watching the One Percent Club on a Saturday? Anybody else watching that? Because we have a thing where we do um, us versus Amy's house on a Saturday, so we we connect via messenger, and then we kind of like all have a go at answering the questions and stuff. And it was it was quite a fun session this last weekend. Just gone. But some of the questions were just crazy, crazy, crazy hard. Sylvia, you watched that as well. I can't think, did you not win this this time, Amy? I can't remember. Was it Salisbury that won or was it us? I think it was you lot. I can't remember how far I got down to this last week. Before I was out. I can't remember. Blame the wand, says Jules. I am blaming the wand. <laughs> right, let's get some of the other blue going on this one now. Oh yeah, and he was he was very pleased with himself as far as far as I remember as well, wasn't he? Very pleased with himself. <laughs> Wait, I can't remember which order these bad boys are going in. So bright blue is next. So bright blue, yeah, I've got the app on my phone as well, and I've been having a couple of little goes. <laughs> I shall look forward to seeing that, Julie. <laughs> in fact, so will the rest rest of the group. Catherine's in the pub like steady on you lot. You're getting daft now. <laughs> they had such a good selection down there that I really did want one and I tell you the other thing that I was really interested in is where you can get the um, like pack your own trunk thing and you get like a mini trunk that you can pack with all sorts of stuff, like the stationery and the sweets and, you know, whatever else. Right, stop playing silly beggars with me, please. Yeah, I was dead interested in that, but I was like, what would I do with a mini trunk? And I came to the conclusion that I would actually, in fact, do nothing with a mini trunk, so I didn't go down that route. But we did have a butterbeer ice cream and it was just amazeballs. The tension's on Jules now, yeah. Everybody get back to Julie and her Harry Potter wand and leave me and my tea gagging alone. <laughs> Never going to lift that down. There's something else that the people at work had listened to. I nearly died. And they were like, tea rhyme, Suzanne's going to do it. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Suzanne won't be doing it and Suzanne won't be having a cup either because it's disgusting. Angela's laughing. Angela, have you had any decent cakes recently? Let's get on to cake. It's digressed me to, to cake. Need to get back to Van Hague's to have cake. Love their cakes though, it's so good. How are we doing up here? Nearly there, nearly dry. Yes, you have. Ah. Uh, Wonderful. Julie, did you have a butterbeer ice cream while you were down at Harry Potter? Did you try that? Because I have to say, that was life-alteringly good. Oh, golden snitch cake. See, we didn't have a cake when we were down there because we had had one of the um, butterbeers and the butterbeer ice cream, which was really, really good. So we were a little bit rigged out by the time we came out. Oh, banana bread. Blue banana bread. <laughs> Malibu will always be banana blue now, Claire. Always. So I'm keeping this um, kind of loose, but just moving the colour around in a slightly different way. So it depends how you're wanting it to look. If you want it to be all dappled like the top one is, you can do it the way that I was doing it earlier. If you're wanting to go a little bit quicker, you can just layer over like I'm doing with this one. <laughs> Finest brioche and butter put. Oh, nice. 
had that instead of the ice cream that cost £123. It was like £156 when we went. It was expensive. I think it was like 27 quid for two ice creams and two butter beers or something, but it was so good. And I was like, yeah, we're going to keep the cups and, you know, we carried them around with us and, yeah, they've got in the recycling bin. We said we totally didn't keep them at all. You can't go there and not have a butter beer. Just can't do it. There we go. So we'll grab the dark cerulean. Didn't mean to send kisses with it. <laughs> you can send kisses. There's lots of love in the room tonight, Angela. So dark cerulean again. I'm going to kind of go back to dotting this on now because the Malibu is quite a bit lighter. So don't want there to be a harsh transition line between the bright blue and then this dark cerulean that we're putting on. So I'm hoping... Oh, you've still got your cup, Sylvia? Ah, oh. We'll have to plan like a Harry Potter thing and go down there. That would be fun. I mean, we can all choose wands together then, can't we? so good down there I love it I think they've got um, a different set out um, than they had on display when we were down there I can't think what it was that's changed I saw it on Instagram a couple of weeks back I think they've done something with the great oil I can't remember you want to go again oh me too do you know and I remember last year when we were looking at it I think I started looking at the dates in July and even then, it was booked right up until, the I think, the end of September. I was so shocked at how crazy busy it was down there. But we hadn't been, I think when I, I tracked down the old photographs, we hadn't been since about 2000 and... I think 2015 or 2014, something like that, we worked out um, from the pictures that we'd taken. So it had been a, a good long while and it was completely different. <laughs> bought hubby one and he ate it what's he eating what are we talking about now butter beers again the cup do they do edible cups down there i don't know if they do edible cups i didn't see edible cups right let's just retouch this top corner he ate a wand they do do chocolate wands down there they do chocolate everything down there wizard hats and frogs and talking of that the um, the chocolate frogs that they do i don't know if any of you that have been there have bought one of the the big chocolate frogs that they do had to absolutely batter the hell out of it with a rolling pin to get it to break it was so solid so so solid it was unbelievable it's like you try and bite into this you're gonna lose half your teeth so that was the great bit of fun sort of smashing that up into pieces quite a lot of chocolate but then they're quite expensive so you don't really expect them to be teeny teeny tiny for the millions of pounds that they cost but nice chocolate and i love the cards in fact i got different i got um, dumbledore cards the first time that we went down there and i got completely different ones this time which was cool and we bought butter beer didn't we for um for you and goff for my mum Solid frog, solid chocolate frog, very much so. So we're going to go back to Malibu now. So again, we're just going to pick the colour up. I just need to get the water flow back through this brush again. It's just being a bit of a bit of a nitwit. Yeah, you've gone a bit keen now. This thing with these brushes, they're either just right, hysterical, or not functioning. And what I don't want is to be too heavy on the water because that's when you run the risk of going through to the other side, albeit accidentally. You drank them both. Oh, isn't that cruelty to chocolate? And if it wasn't a breathing chocolate amphibian, I can confirm it was very much not real. <laughs> Those are rather nice chocolate. That was about £111 as well. It's worth it though. You get a wizard card. And they're so much fun. 
So how many of you that are worried about ink tents are thinking you're going to have a go with your ink tents pencils after watching this? Have we inspired anybody or is, are we still in fear of these pencils? Because I know some of you don't have them. I know Lisa was saying at the beginning she doesn't have them. I was thinking of doing it with ordinary pencils, which of course you can absolutely do. Take you a bit more work with the blending and stuff um, with ordinary pencils. I don't even know. Remember, have you got ink tents amongst the 50 million pencil sets you've got at your house? I can't remember. So I'm just going to pop a little bit down in this edgy bit here because we've just got a little bit of white showing. How does it look if you just do the stipple without the painting under? Well, we could have a little look on a piece of paper. I think it would it would certainly give you a slightly different um, effect. Let's see if I can uh, just grab another piece of paper out of this. So if we just carry on with this one that we've got. You probably can could build it up this way if you didn't want to colour with it first. I don't know whether I'd probably start with light going up to dark if you were going to do that. I think you might want base layers down first, but you, you get a very similar effect just laying it down like this. So yeah, you absolutely could do it like this. You definitely, definitely could. Just cleaning my brush off. This uh, paper is rather damp now. Oh, crikey. We're on fudge now. This is terrible. I'm going to feel like I, I need snacks now. <laughs> Definitely need snacks. Right, let's swizzle this round. Now, are you dry? You are dry. Fabulous. So let's have a little look. So bits and pieces. This is going to be <laughs> Claire, oh God. So for doing this, um, when I first tried it, it was basically a case of use whatever products that I've got available to me. And the first thing that came to mind because I'd not long purchased them was this pencil, which comes in a set of Holbein. Now it's gonna be hard probably for you to see this writing on under this lamp but it says um, soft white, use a knife to sharpen. Now this is a really, really soft white pencil um, that's almost kind of as soft as a pastel would be really, but it's um, a little bit almost oil pastel -y to use. Really, really soft white. So this was what my eye went to because I wasn't actually sure where else I was going to use to try. And this was what I used and I had a really good result with it. You can get other pencils. You've obviously got your whites in your Prismacolor, which is nice and soft, although it's very translucent. It doesn't work as well on here. You've got um, the white luminance is very, very good. You've also got Stadler do something called, I think, a Lumo Color something, something pencil that's quite good for this kind of thing. Your Derwent drawing pencils, the white in that set would be quite good for this. So really, depending on what you've got, it might be worth you doing a couple of sort of blocks of colour, maybe just in a sketchbook, and then just trying whatever white products you actually have over the top and see which ones that you're liking. This is the first thing I tried. It worked really nicely for me. Um, and that's what I've done all of my pages with. So you can get these open stock on Jackson's website and they do ship worldwide. I don't know how economical it's going to be for you to get... Um, you know one pencil it's more economical if you don't want to buy the whole set to get this though because that's like 200 and odd quid the other bits and bobs that i've used for this is my good old faithful jelly roll in a size 10 and also just a paper blending stump so i will start to layer some of this up and show you how i've tackled the page and again just play around with whatever products it is that you guys have got and see what works best for you I'm going to give this a little sharpen first. It says to use a knife to sharpen, but I just stick it in the sharpener. And you can see it is quite um, quite flaky and creamy. It's, it's weird, this pencil. Really, really weird, but 
but nice. And then what we'll do is we will get some of the shading done first of all. So I'm going to have to work upside down just because that's still wet at the bottom. So using this, this soft white, all that I've done with it on the other images that I've used is um, give the inside of the shapes a bit of definition. When I saw Fane's pieces over on Instagram, I could see that there were different bits of um, almost shading in some of the shapes. And I was like, how, have, how has she done that? And I've just played about with this pencil, um, rightly or wrongly, this is how I tackle it. So like for these, for example, I'm not going to press too hard because it's very, very soft. I'm just going to put an inside edge into some of these leaves. So we'll just go opposite sides with this. And this is really, really soft, so you don't have to press very hard. And you can see how nice and bright this is over the top. And it does feel very, very waxy. Almost, almost like wax. It's almost a mixture between oil and wax. It reminds me of oil pastels, which I haven't used since I did art at school many, many years ago. But it, the this particular pencil is almost that consistency. And it's just picking out a little bit of the inside shape. So we'll do some of this this work first before we then start to outline. You don't use a knife on it because it's scary. Yeah, I wouldn't use a craft knife on this either. I'll probably take half my finger off. So I'm just going along the inside edge. You can sort of vary where you put in um, these highlights in so that it looks a little bit different. Keep it all the same. It's entirely up to you. Used white pencil where the shadows would be. Yeah, definitely. Like some, the, the picture of um, Fane's that inspired me, I could see that she'd obviously done something to create highlights. I'm not kind of looking for where shadows or light sources would be. I'm literally just trying to make the shapes look a little bit more interesting. So I'm just varying really where I'm putting these highlights. If you're doing something like a, a swan, um, like on the page that Catherine did that she's talking about, then yes, you might want to be a bit more realistic about where you're putting the highlights. Um, so on the underwater page where I've got the building, I've put highlights where I would have done normally when I'm when I'm colouring. But with these just being little tiddly leaves and things, I just want to make the, the shapes look a little bit more interesting. I used to really obsess about where light sources and where the right place would be to put shadows and stuff like that. And I've found since I've relaxed a bit more into what I'm doing and I'm just actually colouring for the pleasure of it, I don't even really plan where a light source is going to come from anymore. I just put highlights and shadows where I want to put them. And it just takes a little bit of that, of that pressure off. For me anyway. Um, so this does wear down quite quickly. So it does get a little bit a little bit sort of claggy where you've been using it so you do need to um, have to sort of keep it sharpened quite regularly I think we're just about okay for them in fact for those little tiddly shapes we definitely want a bit more so this I would not not put in the 10 win not a chance You'd lose half the pencil in the 10 win because it's just too soft and smushy but we'll just put a little bit of a light area inside these and then with the um, paper stump so I'm just going to use, I've got a little um, sharpening block and I'm just going to um, get a better tip on this. We'll do both ends. So you can see it's blue from where I used it on the last page that I did. So you can get a whole load of these very cheaply from Amazon great big chunky ones, thin ones, um, you know, whatever. So what make is the pencil? It's Holbein. Holbein. And it's the soft white. So then with this um, pencil stump, pencil stump, paper stump, I'm just going to smooth over where I've used this inside the shapes 
which keeps it still nice and white, but it just makes it a little bit more subtle. But yeah, you can get them from Jackson's. Um, Jackson's Art in the UK, you can get Holbein open stock and you can get this pencil. I'll probably put an order in at some point to get more of these just white pencils on their own because they do go down a bit when you uh, when you sharpen them. And I'm just gonna blur blur these edges in a little. So like I say, I don't want it to be completely like hello. She's used something white here. Um. I just want to blurry the edges because when we outline it then it just looks a bit more subtle. It doesn't matter if you go over the um, black line art as you're using the blending stump either because of course you're going to be going over it in white pen anyway so it doesn't really matter. So just give give it a tickle. That's the, the phrase of the evening isn't it? Give it a little tickle. Um, no, you don't use a knife on all of the... I don't know why it says it on this, um, because I think if you used a knife on this, it is so soft and squishy, you would just lose loads of it. And it just says on here, use a knife to sharpen. But I don't, I'm just using my Statler Tub sharpener on it. So let's carry on doing a little bit more outlining. So we'll turn this around this way. And then I'll do a little bit of um, the outline and I won't do all of this image because we're rapidly approaching um, nine o'clock and I want to uh, spend some time with my lovely wife before we have to go up the wooden hill. And I is getting a slightly sore belly, so I need to move. I've been hunched over this for too long, I think. <laughs> I've enjoyed myself though. So again, we're just going to give this these um, little dots the smallest of tiny, tiny highlights in here. So, for, you know, you may decide if you're going to do um, highlights on leaves and stuff that you want to go over the whole image with the white pencil. The bigger pages, um, I was actually doing little sections where so I would highlight, do the white pen, move to another area, um, do the white pen that kind of thing can you use a prisma blender pencil um i don't know i haven't tried i would say that it wouldn't be as blingy as this i would say you would want to use something similar to this the derwent um white pastel pencil could work um hard pastels do yourself some blocks of color and try out different products that you've got already in your kit at home and just see what works best for you literally I got this, wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, tried it out and thought, oh yeah, that looks good. So I've just been using this solidly, but I know that there are other brands that do, um, you know, some very vibrant white pencils. You're not going to get a Prismacolor white going as vibrant as this over the top. It's quite translucent. Um, Luminance has got a good white. I've not tried the polys. I don't know whether the polychromos would sit over this. I'm not sure. I'd have to do some tests, I think. But there are different products about. I think the Derwent white drawing pencil would be a good fit. But again, that comes, I think, in a set of about 30 odd pencils. So it's yeah, it swings and roundabouts really, isn't it? What you what you pay to get, or if you've already got that set in your in your kit, then great. Um, but if not, see what you can get open stock from places. I'll definitely be getting more of these white, soft white Holbeins from Jackson's because it's um it's a really interesting little gizmo to use. It's been just right for this anyway. So we'll do a little bit of uh, white outlining next. And that the paper blending stump just dials it down a little notch. Do you mean for a blender pencil instead of the blending stump? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, is that what you meant, Laurie? To use it instead of using one of these paper stump things? Because I have these to use with, um, with pastels, but because this product that I'm using, the white pencil, behaves very much like an oil pastel, it's, it's just the right sort of thing for um, easing over bits. 
I'm just going to give this a little sharpen again. Oh god, I'm definitely going to need the dust cover for this. You could try it. Um, I haven't even got one to hand, Laurie, so I can't. I can't say that I'll, I'll whip that out and give it a go for you. I don't even think I've got it in my project case. I've got the Caran Dash blender in my in my project case, but I don't have the Prisma one. I think that's going to be buried in my spares pencil case, which is about the size of a small suitcase. <laughs> I will show you those other um, paint colours as well before we finish real quick. So I'm just smoothing over all of these. And then brush all these bits. A cotton bud. Yeah, you probably could use a cotton bud as well. So we'll do um, just a little bit of outlining. So again, it's just the jelly roll um, in a size 10 for this one. It, this gives quite a thick line, but if you don't press too hard, you can, you can create a much thinner line with this, even though it's the bigger size. So we will start work on this one. Let me just make sure that it's, yeah, it is working. This one's been uh, laying in my pencil case. And literally all you're doing now is covering over the black line art. Doesn't matter if little bits and bobs of it are still showing. What I found really good fun, particularly with the, um, the fish page that I did, the big one, is going over all of the line art like this rather than just colouring the shapes. It was um, obviously what um, Johanna would have drawn. So I found it quite interesting sort of drawing the image over um, what she'd obviously produced. Because normally you're filling it in rather than drawing over it. There we go. Hello Charlie. Just got asked by Gary. I'll oh, take Kelly's... Uh... Oh, that sounds interesting, Jeanette. I'm feeling not too bad, thank you, Charlie. Not too bad at all. Had a, a lovely day off today, which has been really nice. I've been messing about with my Sims most of the day on my iPad and um, watching Grey's Anatomy. It's been lovely. I'll just do a bit more of this outlining with you and then uh, we will call it a day and I will finish the rest off with you guys on Sunday. But it will be a bit of a shorter stream on Sunday because we've made loads more progress than I thought I would this evening. But I do have other pages, um, you know, put by that I can see me using this on. And it's mainly ones where it's got things on it that I don't know how I would tackle or the page is a bit too busy. Because it gives you quite quite a good look. Yeah, definitely, Angela. Definitely. <laughs> he raised his eyebrows, did he? <laughs> Bless him. He's going to be like, wow, that chick is actually crazy. <laughs> I hope you're going to fill him in on the rest of the story or he's probably going to ban you watching these videos. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's good fun doing this. It's kind of therapeutic and you just stick the ink tents down wherever it lands tidy it up a little bit draw over everything really therapeutic it does feel a bit weird um just coloring straight over the top of things you know it does but it's quite therapeutic this is the best bit just doing the outlining at the end but I tend to work, and um, like I was saying earlier, in, in little patches. So I maybe do this side and then move right over here um, so that I'm not risking um, putting my hand through anything. But yeah, re really, really therapeutic. T-shirts on order. <laughs> oh, God, Amy, that's terrible. Should I rename the Facebook group that? 
but yeah it's given a whole new dimension to the couple of pages that I've done so I mean I really can't face it right now but obviously that um underwater fish page is actually a double pager and so in all likelihood I'm going to do the other side of it exactly the same but probably just in a different palette because I can't face it it's too busy for me I, I can't cope with pages that look like that so yeah it's just a way I think of doing pages that you would otherwise have piked out of it gives you a bit of an interesting look waits for Suzanne to read yeah I've read it <laughs> t-shirts on order that's good Julie get your ink tents out and have a go with them thinks poor Sylvia's wanting about six different palettes so we'll have to see what we can come up with for Sunday because I'm not doing six circles we're only doing these two but you can have a go at making palettes yourselves with a sketchbook you know just put colours together and see you won't always like the ones that you try but you may just find some that are great and if you keep them in a sketchbook and just note them down you can use them for other pages and stuff I've done a lot of work with my ink tents over the last month or so. Um, in fact, they've only just been put back in the cupboard. Neo Colour 2. Yeah, see, I've, I have got um, a little set of Neo Colour 2 that my mum sent me off my Amazon wish list, and I still have not swatched them and tried them yet. I really must do and, um, and see what I think of them. It's such a dinky little tin as well. It's really cute, really hard to open. Um, but really cute. That's a good idea, Angela. <laughs> but I think they might turn us away if we have um, that hashtag over the front. Be a bit orcs, wouldn't it? Or I'll just wear a t-shirt saying I'm not with this lot. <laughs> this is nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. I'm not with these people. <laughs> Or hashtag it was my mum's, mum's and Julie's fault. So I am going to be winding up um, in the next couple of minutes because um, time is marching on. So all being well, um, I should finish this with you guys on Sunday. Just keep an eye on my socials if I know it's definitely going to be all right. I'll probably put something up sort of late on tomorrow when I know if, you know, if I know I'm going to be well enough to. Um... And then we'll, we'll finish this off together. Oh, Angela, leave it out. <laughs> the Neo colour match up exactly with the Pablos. I'm so not reading that. Honestly, you lot, are you desperate for me to get Pablos? I'm not doing it. <laughs> Just not doing it. No more hashtag, no more pencils. I'm definitely open to more pots of paint because they're just lush. <laughs> You lot are terrible. Oh dear. So I'll show you these um, tins of paint real quick. We'll just do this this last little leaf here. Let's just get that line a bit tidier. There we go. So I will we'll finish this off um, with you guys live. I won't, much as I want to, I won't do anything else to this until we meet again. So I'll just spin that round. But that is giving you the idea, hopefully. So we'll, we'll finish all of this off um, together on the next live. Let me just grab... It does sound like a Victoria Wood sketch. It absolutely 100% does. <laughs> Sell your Neo Color 2 to buy Pablo. It's only got a tin of 12. Don't think it'd get me very far. <laughs> right, let me see if I can get these without killing myself by falling off this chair. Oh. Come hither, my loves. So this one I think Amy will like. So nice pink colour. So that's one of them. Smells weird though. Poor oh God, it does smell strange. Have a sniff. It smells really bizarre. So that's one. And then this was ash blue. Or blue ash, ash blue. Put that on a bit tighter than I thought. That's a lovely colour as well. Also smells very peculiar. And I've got, this is Naples Yellow Light. It does look like posh ice cream. <laughs> it 
It's a nice creamy yellow. And then the one that a few people have said they're interested in is this grey green. God, I didn't think I'd redone these up as tight as this. There we go. That's a really interesting colour as well. So I'm going to use one of these on the background of a page that I'm working on at the moment, which is this one. So this is the one that I'm messing about with with my Prisma colours. So I haven't done the sparkly bits yet, but I'm going to use one of these on the background um, of this one. So I'll probably do a bit more of this tonight while we're watching telly. Do they dry quite quickly? They do. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good, actually. Um, they dry. They do dry quite quickly. Really thick coverage as well. And bearing in mind how many hundreds of millions of pages I've used this black for. So I don't know if you can quite see the level there of the jar, but I'm down to like not even halfway. And this was about a tenner and it's done copious amounts of pages. No, Julie, they don't smell when they're... At least I don't think they do. Bear with. No, they don't smell when they're dry. Not at all. But really good value for money. This was a tenner and it's it, I've used this to death. So, um, yeah. But 76 colours they do, you lot. 76 colours. I won't be buying all 76 colours. <laughs> there are tubes as well. You know what I like about the jars, though, is the fact that it keeps this airtight, so you don't have to pour bits out, um, then maybe not use it and waste it if it's in a jar. That was the reason I went for the jars anyway, and it does keep. Um, they don't go weird. So, yeah, that's me for, for tonight. That's been a really good couple of hours. Thank you for your company. It's been another crazy stream, which is what we're used to on my streams, I think. Um, like I say, just keep an eye on my socials as long as I'm feeling okay. Sort of late on tomorrow, I will aim to finish this off with you guys on Sunday. So we'll just be doing more of, of the finishing off um, bits and pieces on this one. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed um, that. Thank you for your company. It's been really, really good. I'm just looking to check if there's any other questions before I go. Does Cass Art deliver to the US? I believe it does, yes. I'm sure it does because when... I had to put in for the postage quote. It asks for your state and your zip code and stuff. And then it gives you the quote for the postage then. And it was really fast. Um, I ordered next day delivery and they were here under 24 hours after I bought them and really well packaged. It was great. But yeah, as Catherine's just said, have a look for US stockists. Because I know Shannon, um, who's sometimes on the live, she's just got a bunch of these colours from somewhere over in the US. So you must be able to get them. But yeah, have a look um, at local stockists before you go to Cassar. It might be a bit more reasonably priced than for postage and stuff. But yeah, take care of a biddy. I'm going to go and spend some time with my lovely wife before it's bedtime. And I will hopefully see you all at the weekend. So take care. I'll see you all soon. Bye.